Homewood Field in Baltimore, Maryland, historic home base for Johns Hopkins University lacrosse. After suffering through a rare losing season in 2010, this young Blue Jays squad has risen to a number three national ranking and suddenly has aspirations of championship glory with vivid memories of their ninth title back in 07. Tonight, a resurgent group of Albany Great Danes stands in their way with Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU. Let's kickstart your weekend in style with Old Spice College Lacrosse. Tonight, the Great Danes of Albany begin their busy weekend with a trip to Baltimore and a bout with third ranked Johns Hopkins. Nice to have you aboard. Along with Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Dave Petromala prowling on the sideline in his 11th season as the boss of Johns Hopkins Lacrosse, and his winning percentage is extraordinary. Really doing a great job. And there is his counterpart, Scott Marr. These two were teammates at Johns Hopkins, very good friends, and this is a key game for both ball clubs. Officials today, Kevin Forrester, Bob Manfuso, and Keith Runk. Johns Hopkins at home wearing the white. Opening draw, first possession belongs to Keith Olson and the Great Danes in the purple and gold. Matt Delente has been outstanding this year, four and white with the ball at the faceoff edge. Getting the Blue Jays uh, possessions time after time. Johns Hopkins settles in first chance on offense. A mark of seven and two, tangling with Albany, a record of four and five. Back behind the cage at Zach Palmer, picking him up Mike Banks, the top cover guy for Scott Mars, Great Danes. This is Rannigan straight away. Getting help from Guida. Nice complimentary midfielder. Palmer, jitterbugs to the crease. Rannigan keeps it hot. Greeley on the shuffle step. Jump shot, he scores. The play is created by something that doesn't happen very often for this Johns Hopkins offense, and that's Zach Palmer dodging. And we're going to see the quick slides from the Albany defense Slide off of John Greeley. Ball goes over to Rannigan. Rannigan gets it to Greeley. A little pump fake, betters his angle, and puts it past the freshman, Edmund Cathers. Terrific start for the Blue Jays. John Greeley among the top five point producers for Johns Hopkins. Olsen and Delente back at the X. And Delente, who comes into tonight's action, second best in the nation. Only Adam Rand of Stony Brook better. Controls that face up doing such a great job at the face-off square. When you talk about improvement overall for Johns Hopkins, it really has started at the face-off where Delente only won 45% a year ago. Really a leader on this young Blue Jay ball club. Phil Castronova, short stick defensive midfielder out there for the Blue Jays as they're still going through their substitution pattern. Most experienced performer, tops game played guy, Kyle Wharton on the ball. Blue Jays are lightning fast starters. This is six times now this season that they have struck on the game's first shot. And incredibly important to get off to a good start. Albany's a team, they're very streaky. They're coming off a four game losing streak, beat Harvard last weekend, but the longer you let a team like Albany hang around, the more their confidence swells. Great start for Johns Hopkins. Coppersmith has an excellent split dodge. He's showing it off there to the long stick midfielder, Scott Raffensperger. Back behind the cage, it's Boland. Oldest player on this squad, Chris Boland, teaming up with Zach Palmer. You can see the rain pelting down, a cold, rainy, raw night in Baltimore. Sneak attack, and it's Cathers making the save there. Great positioning. Cathers is a big kid. Five foot nine, 240 pounds. Boland took the necessary step to get the angle, but Cathers held him off and held his position beautifully. Great Danes love to play for that youngster, the freshman 18-year-old Edmund Cathers, who bumped John Carroll from the starting spot in the uh, first month of the season. Johns Hopkins will get possession here. A little bit of a procedure call against Albany, may have been an illegal substitution. Albany cannot afford to give the Blue Jays second chances. They have to clear and 
get that ball from defense to offense all night long. Moving towards the uh, three minute mark. Old Spice College lacrosse from Homewood Field. Blue Jays on top thanks to a John Greeley strike. Mr. Greeley has the ball right now. Teaming up with John Rannigan and Rob Guida in the top midfield unit for Dave Petromala. Wharton is an outstanding shooter as they circle it up. Guida, excellent burst. It's the first step that creates for him. Rannigan powers to the middle. Skip pass, Wharton deflected away by Cathers who took the angle away. We can see the defensive philosophy of Albany there, stretching the defense out, not letting the Johns Hopkins midfielders get long runs at them. That's opening things up underneath for the Johns Hopkins attack. For the Blue Jays, you just saw the keys for them. We'll share more with Albany in a moment as Greeley goes to the sweep. Banks hedging there. Patient approach from the Blue Jays on top by one. Wharton has the short stick defender there, Daly Baker. Palmer, skip a man, Greeley over the top and too tall. Mark, if Albany is to pull the upset, what needs to happen tonight? Well, first of all, they got to get the ball on offense. And, and if and when they do, they've got to keep it hot, crisp ball movement. And we already hit on it, defense to offense. Clear the ball, not only to get possessions, but Albany loves to run and really thrives in the transition game. Guida sprints to the middle and finds Rannigan. Flexes it off for Palmer. Marked there on the outside by Travis Lyons. Dive attempt through the crease. They're gonna wash it out. No goal. Kyle Wharton's had one of those washed out before this season. A very timely tally in overtime against Syracuse. We'll get a good look at this and see if his foot touches the crease line. And it's going to say it was a dive as Wharton left his feet on his own volition. Really no contact. Smart defensive play. The Albany defender stepped back and allowed Wharton to propel himself into the crease. Another misfire for the Great Danes. The turnover totals continue to mount. Blue Jays with a quick restart. Rannigan for Boland off the pipe. Cather's stepping out there. A failed clear. Rannigan unsettled, marches into the alley. Sharp angle. Drifted it wide of the cage. Edmund Cather's will start the clear. Scott Marr tells us this goaltender, this freshman can throw rockets on outlets. Leads the transition game, a great stopper. Several 20 stop performances in a couple of games this year for Albany. He's a special talent and unseated a very good goaltender in John Carroll to get the starting nod. Jack Nicola, long stick defender, bringing it ahead. The timeout is called for by Albany. Johns Hopkins has the one nothing advantage. John Greeley on the board. We'll get you back for more Old Spice College lacrosse in a moment from Baltimore, Maryland. Johns Hopkins has taken eight of nine straight up against Albany all time. They've got a one nothing advantage in the opening quarter. Our Warrior Impact players first for the Blue Jays. A trio of sophomores, Lee Coppersmith compliments Rannigan and Greeley in the midfield. And we're gonna see two of the best defensive players in the nation. Again, only sophomores, Tucker Durkin and goaltender Pierce Bassett. Who are the headliners likely to be for Albany? Well, Joe Reseteritz, the last name Reseteritz, synonymous with Albany lacrosse. His older brother Frank was a stellar All-American. Brian Caulfield, he's a major league lacrosse selection of the Rochester Rattlers. And Edmund Cathers, the freshman netminder. We've seen him already make several big stops. We've referenced Albany just one win against Johns Hopkins. You brought up the name of the guy who scored the game-winning goal back in 07, Frank Reseteritz. Brother Joe is an energy guy for this Albany squad. He has the ball right now. His pass to Bonatonymous gets lost in the rain. Another turnover for the Great Danes. A terrible start for Albany. It's their fifth turnover. Scott Moore had to burn a timeout just to get them an offensive possession. And that is an unforced error, just an exchange pass up top goes awry. You can see the rain really coming down. Maybe the sticks of the Albany Great Danes have been affected. Your, your mesh pocket tends to bag out. You read my mind because this is the hardest it has rained since warm-ups tonight here at Homewood Field. I was gonna ask you how that impacts the players and their crosses. The temperatures, I'm not buying 47 <laughs> degrees, by the way, as Coppersmith runs for cover. Chris Bolin will play catch with him. Lee Coppersmith, back-to-back -back game winners 
Dave Petromala says of 16 in the white, he's a terrific athlete. They're thrilled to have Eric Rule back in business. 20 in white, just off the injured list. Eric Rule, a great shooter, and he's going to take advantage of some short stick matchups. You can see Coppersmith draws the long pole. Wharton slings it for Goodrich, who's inverted. And then Bolin comes to the rescue. one nothing advantage for Johns Hopkins. They've had the time of possession. They've had the territorial lead. Still just the John Greeley goal to show for it. Gathers has made a couple of good stops, and he's been helped by the goalpost a time or two. Chris Bolin, a couple of years back, a five-goal performance against Albany. They got tricky. They put a short-stick defender on him, and he burned them. Coppersmith slithers to the alley. Goodrich for Bolin to the inside. He scores. We're going to see excellent body control on the replay. Short stick was on Chris Bolin. They switched off real quick, but watch him fake hitch. He draws Cathers off the pipe. Cathers thinks he's going to shoot right there where his stick is. He steps out to meet the stick. Bolin just hesitates ever so slightly. Tremendous body control, great wrist strength. He sends it near pipe where Cather's vacated. Low angle look there really gave you an example of the body control of Chris Bolin. Definitely tucking that one in. Delente wins the draw. Another possession for Johns Hopkins on top by two as we near the midway mark of the opening quarter. Bolin shaded by Jack Nicola. One of the pleasant surprises, a close defense for Albany. Head coach Scott Marr said Nicola proved him wrong. Rannigan comes to get it. Guida is next in line. First midfield unit back on the field for Johns Hopkins. Dave Petramala and everyone in lacrosse world described this as a trap game for Johns Hopkins. Playing this game sandwiched between Syracuse, Virginia, North Carolina, and Maryland next week. Hopkins doing a great job getting off to this fast start. Rannigan running downhill. Wharton has a defender hung up. Sneaks. Cathers crosses over and makes the save. Edmund Cathers. You mentioned his big save performances. He had 21 against Bucknell earlier this season. Three so far tonight. His shot-stopping ability allows the Albany defense to take chances and create transition. He is such a talented stopper and they have confidence in him that he's going to make the saves necessary to play this up-tempo style that Albany really enjoys. Albany finally gets the ball into the cross of its quarterback, Brian Caulfield. He and Rocky Bonatonimus working up top. If Albany is to work well this evening offensively, it's likely to be in number 28 sticking off a lot. Brian Caulfield, six foot four, broke his jaw a year ago. Albany struggled. Injury, missed two games this season. Albany dropped both of them. He is a vital component to Scott Mars attacking. Hopkins goalie Pierce Bassett may need another warm-up. He's been downright lonely, hasn't faced a shot yet, as we're nearing six minutes to go in the opening quarter. Bonatonibus defended by Guida. Rolling back. Ressa Terrence. No running room for him. Miles Thompson gets inside, slings it off the outside of the net. Miles and Ty Thompson, numbers two and three in the purple. They are cousins and they are very crafty. Tremendous recruits by Scott Moore when you consider most Native American players go to Syracuse. You think of Marshall Abrams. You talk about Sid Smith, Cody Jamison, Brett Bucktooth, Jeremy Thompson is at Syracuse right now. Great recruiting crew for Albany to get the Thompson cousins, and then Lyle Thompson, the younger brother of Miles, comes next year. I was going to say, they're not done yet. <laughs> they're not done yet. 2 nothing for Johns Hopkins. Greeley and Boland on the board if you're just tuning in. Copper Smith from the unlikely lacrosse hotbed of Florida. It's hot, but they don't play a lot of lacrosse down there. He comes to Hopkins with a, a surfboard, a tan, and a, and a close loss to boys Latin during his high school career. St. Andrews, one of the uh, premier programs in the state of Florida and building a national reputation. Palmer and Boland playing the two-man game behind the uh, Albany goal. This is Coppersmith, an outstanding athlete, switching it up. Burkhart running downhill. Doesn't take his own shot there. They work it inside. Bang, bang for Mark Goodridge.
The weather certainly is not affecting the stick work or the crisp passing of the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. You bang the ball backside. Typically then Volan would hit the backside. Goodrich recognizes a little bit of ball watching on the part of the Albany defense. Streaks down the middle, beautiful feed. Goodrich redirects it into the back of the net. And the senior off injured during his career here at Homewood, putting together a stellar fourth year campaign. Missed all of 2010 with a torn Achilles. Delente, one of the leaders for this team, wins another draw. Delente has taken three of the four skirmishes at midfield. Johns Hopkins has a chance to enhance its 3-0 advantage. And you think about the opening faceoff. Delente lost it. Albany picked up the ground ball. But Marshall Burkhart off the wing created a turnover. So not only is Delente doing a great job individually, but his wing play has markedly improved in 2011 versus last season. Mark, it is uh, Bolin and Goodrich already with multi-point performances. Johns Hopkins off to a flying start. This is like the third week in a row that they performed very well in the outset of a lacrosse game. Big, I'm sorry, big lead Joe against Virginia and North Carolina, only to hold him off in the end. Dave Petramala wants that complete dominant effort tonight. The open man is Bolin. Hathers took a knee to make the save. And then the rebound is cleared to safety by Daly Baker. Clearing time for the Great Danes. Dave Petromala said, you know what? We're going to have to ride in this game. And right now, his Blue Jays and White are in a riding posture. They've done a great job so far. First successful clear. But I take it back as Albany turns it over with a dangerous pass inside. Poor decision right there. Get it down the side. Get yourself a nice offensive flow. Rannigan was in the passing lane for the deflection. As you can see, the rain continues to pelt down here at Homewood Field. Rannigan waiting for the substitutions to continue and complete. Oh, Greeley with a good split. Finds Bolin. And then Palmer. Wharton is the shooter. Loves to play on that far flank and crank up those left-handed high heaters. Bolin reversing the flow for Greeley. Now Rannigan drawing the double. Raffensperger turns him back. Guida shakes from Baker. Bolin on the dip and dunk, and Cathers snuffed it out. Cathers is doing a great job of following the player's stick. He is, his stick is mirroring the Chris Bolin stick. He does a great job of holding his position, and he's very efficient in his movements. Great Danes with a clear here. Travis Lyons doing the honors. A junior from Farmingdale, New York, on Long Island. Throughout the night, you'll be seeing numbers at the bottom of the screen. All the stats unfold. Fierstein fires, there's Bassett's first save of the contest. The outlet is right on the mark for Rannigan. Rumbling ahead. Rannigan slings one past Cathers. That was a rocket. Dave Petromala, when we spoke to him this week, said everybody thinks we are a six on six team, but we will push the tempo and run transition when given the opportunity. Great outlet pass by Pierce Bassett, and watch the sophomore from Yorktown do the rest of the work. Beautiful dodge, just a power dodge, and he catches Edmund Cathers cheating. Just said he's very efficient in his movements. He bent down low, Rannigan recognized it, put it right past him high, stick side. Rannigan in his sophomore season, his coming out party, his first career hat trick was against Albany last year on this field. The Blue Jays blitzed the Great Danes. Johns Hopkins sharing the wealth in this first quarter. Four different scores on the board. Big difference this year from last year is the offensive balance of the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Last year they relied so much on Michael Kimmel and Stephen Boyle. But this year, really, Weida, Rannigan, Wharton, Bolin, Palmer, Coppersmith. That's seven names right there right off the top, Joe, that can hurt you if you don't pay attention to their offensive talent. Mark, the guys in white averaging 11 goals a game this season. That's among the top 12 in the nation in Division I. Coppersmith ran off the shooting angle. Time's a-wasting in this opening quarter. 118 left in it. Coppersmith off the face dodge sends it wide of the goal. Lee Coppersmith readying for another offensive possession. Johns Hopkins has had the ball the vast majority of these first 15 minutes. Copper Smith so explosive as a Dodger. 
and getting an opportunity two weeks ago when John Greeley got hurt against Virginia, game winner against the Cavaliers, game winner a week ago at the Conica Minolta Big City Classic against North Carolina. Strong defense there behind the goal from Cody Fuchsia, another 18-year-old freshman for Albany. Burkhart's pass, that crossed up Boland, handcuffed him a bit, and this will belong to Albany. Fuchsia again with a nice play, deflected the ball, changed the vision of Chris Boland. He wasn't able to handle it as it deflected off a of Boland stick out of bounds. So Fuchsia, the talented freshman out of Schenectady, New York, makes the great play. No other way to characterize this, Mark. This is an awful night for lacrosse. I mean, it is cold. It is pouring down, raining sideways. And right now, Johns Hopkins is having its way with Albany. This is when you wish you played on grass and the game potentially could be canceled. No, no, no. This is when you wish you played in a dome, my friend. A dome. Caulfield working in against Jack Riley, the freshman long stick defender. Bonatonymous lets it go. He scores! Six seconds left in the first quarter and exactly what Albany needed. Good defensive work by Jack Riley, but look at Caulfield, so smart, steps away from the pressure of Riley. Bonatanabas steps in, beautiful high to low shot. That's the feeding ability of Brian Caulfield and why he is going to be playing this summer for a Rochester Rattlers. In Major League Lacrosse, Bonatanabas, six goals now, all six of them at even strength. Six seconds to go in the quarter. Face-off win for Castronova and the Blue Jays. A long heave at the horn, and we are done with 15 minutes in Baltimore. Johns Hopkins ranked number three in the land and showing off its offensive might. On top, 4-1 after one quarter of play. Johns Hopkins Blue Jays have won four of their last five. They've got a 4-1 lead after one tonight. Mark, these two head coaches have a great deal of respect for one another, and it stems from their collegiate amateur playing days. Take a look at the 1989 Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. There's Dave Petromala on your left, and his teammate Scott Marr, dead center. This team went to the NCAA championship that game, lost to Syracuse, but also in this picture are other current Division I head coaches, Brian Volker from Drexel, Seth Tierney from Hofstra. You've got Billy Dwan, who's the associate head coach at Johns Hopkins, and you have Don Zimmerman, was their head coach in 1989, now the head man at UMBC, and countless assistants, Kevin Bowen at Vermont, Todd Cavallaro, head coach at Franklin and Marshall, the coaching tree at Hopkins, very strong. Such a far-reaching coaching tree when you think about it. As we settle in for the start of quarter number two, it's Johns Hopkins in Albany, Along with Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. We're here at Homewood Field in Baltimore, Maryland. Blue Jays bagged the first four goals on the night. Greeley, Bolin, Goodrich, and Rannigan in succession. Rocky Bonatonibus has answered for Albany in the visiting purple and gold. Kyle Wharton off of one of his best performances. A number of people think it was his overall best a week ago against North Carolina at the Meadowlands. Rannigan delivers for Guida. Quick shake and fire off the inside of the post again. The ricochet for Greeley. Johns Hopkins, the lacrosse ball movement has been very good for about a month now. They're sharing the ball, keeping it hot, really moving around, and keeping defenses guessing. Something you didn't see a year ago is there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one individual play. The teamwork for Johns Hopkins in 2011 is off the charts. Rannigan marching to the alley. The quick double comes from the freshman Fierstein. Palmer matched up with Banks, who's been under the weather this week. Palmer, that slick shooter, just missed the target. Dodging quite a bit, and we see Banks taking Zach Palmer. The, off, the defensive philosophy for Albany, man-to-man, -man, unforgiving, quick slides. And we saw in the previous sequence, Rannigan matched up on a short stick. They changed that immediately and put the pole on number 31. You were cautioning us at the outset of the show about Albany's midfield defense having to be very, very good. Guida pressuring now along with Wharton. Steps to a better angle and scores. Kyle Wharton. The midfield defense for Albany has gotten tightened up since the beginning of the first quarter, but here,
they allow Rob, Rob Guida to split them. And this is almost a little bit of a change up for Kyle Wharton when number 42 turns the corner. He typically rips it hard and high. That time he sent it low. Subject of our Sector Spiders player portfolio, Kyle Wharton. Big time totals, he goes over 100 career points with that tally. Coming into 2011, Dave Petromala said he needed more leadership and better practice out of number 42. And he's gotten it, and that's led to better performance for Kyle Wharton in his senior campaign. Albany gets a touch here offensively. Johns Hopkins has controlled the faceoff square. Not given the Great Danes very many touches. They have one now. An Albany squad that comes in with a mark of four and five. A winner in its recent outing against Harvard. First ever meeting with the Crimson Tide. Joe Reseteritz takes it back behind the cage. He's comfortable there. Scott Marr likes to take attackmen and turn them into midfielders. He, he likes the lacrosse IQ of attackmen in general. Bonatonibus, his pass gets away. The intended target was Ressa Terrence. It'll stay Albany ball. This weekend, ESPNU brings you two exciting college baseball matchups. Saturday, 8 Eastern, LSU tangling with Arkansas in an SEC showdown. Then Sunday at 5 Eastern, it's an in-state battle. UC Irvine facing Cal State Fullerton. College baseball Saturday and Sunday on ESPNU. You UC Irvine and Cal State Fullerton, Big West Conference. Both of those teams are going great guns. The Titans have won nine in a row. You mentioned Scott Marr and his affinity for attackmen. Marr was an attackman here at Johns Hopkins. We just touched on it. He likes the hybrid mix. He thinks attackmen can play both midfield and down low offensively. And we're seeing it here tonight with the diversity of Caulfield and Reseteritz. Kreitzer spins it back for Bonatonibus and then Reseteritz against Donovan, who is a mountain of a man, 25 in the white. Tough to get around. But a, a matchup that Scott Moore wants to exploit with the stick work and the quickness of Reseteritz. Working around a screen. He got that from Caulfield. Donovan continues to lean on him. Miles Thompson's shot is stabbed by Pierce Bassett. Top three in the nation when it comes to save percentage. He pulls down his second stop of this opening half. And we're seeing Hopkins forcing the Thompsons away from the crease. Interior defense, a key tonight for the Blue Jays. They'll let the Thompson shoot from 10 yards and out all night long. The man who leads the nation in terms of save percentage and goal, Penn State's Austin Kaut, who recently made 25 stops against UMass. It is a great year for goaltenders. I just put together a midseason All-American team for inside lacrosse. I got Pierce Bassett as my first teamer, John Galloway as a second teamer. But when you talk about the youngsters, Nico Amato of Maryland, Kaut of Penn State, Brian Feeney at UPenn, and you throw in Tyler Fiorito, Matt Chris of Brown, Jonathan Falcone out of Yale in the Ivy League. I mean, it's just a deep, talented class. And then you've got the senior out of Army, Tom Paleski, and it's just a very deep, talented uh, situation in 2011 for goaltenders. Good trail check there from Ostrander defensively for the Great Danes. Palmer looking to the inside. That one floats and hits the turf. Bounding to the sideline and not able to catch up with it, Marshall Burkhardt. 5-1 for Johns Hopkins, the only strike in this second quarter coming from Kyle Wharton. And a great point. We talked about it a few minutes ago, the great starts of Johns Hopkins, but now we're seeing a lull in their performance. A little, a little uh, shoddy out here, a little tattered. They catch a break by getting pushed into the crease, but this is what Dave Petromala is talking about. Get a big lead and just put it away. But now they're letting Albany hang around. You know the coaching staff and the captains were priming the pump this week as Coppersmith goes high. Everybody was talking about this being a trap game with Maryland on the horizon for the Blue Jays. This is the gauntlet portion of Johns Hopkins' schedule. Syracuse, Virginia, North Carolina, all three one-goal games, all three emotional. Now you have Albany, and then you've got the fiercest rival perhaps on the schedule in University of Maryland a week, a week from now. Coppersmith stings the corner. If this game is a trap, Hopkins is doing a great job of certainly avoiding it. And there we're gonna see Lee Coppersmith, the sophomore out of Boca Raton, Florida, 
just a straight dodge with his left. You can see the overplay and the aggressive defense of the Albany Great Danes. They don't cover backside. And if you leave the speedster uncontested like that, that is the end result. Coaches and teammates say they're just scratching the surface of the potential of Lee Copper Smith. Able to uh, sting corners with both hands. Copper Smith had those three big goals against the University of Virginia. Signature win for these Blue Jays. Delente continues to rule in the uh, faceoff department. And the Blue Jays now with six different goal scorers on the board. We saw glimpses of brilliance of Coppersmith as a freshman. Oh, my goodness. Wharton with an outstanding shot. It's 7-1. That's what the big senior out of Haverford can do to you. He catches you off guard. The quick release and the placement. You want to talk about brilliance. Gets a little bit of space. That is high to high, stick side. Upper 90, you can't place it any better and the velocity is unrealistic. And we see Cather's just, what am I supposed to do? Mark, he was running away from the goal, drifting away. Cather's was completely unaware. And in the blink of an eye, it's in the top corner. A couple of markers for the Blue Jays, less than 15 seconds apart. And this one is on its way to being a runaway train. As it was last spring, 19-7, in Johns Hopkins' favor. Castronova dealing with some pressure. Palmer drifts back behind the net. We are just under nine minutes to go in the opening half and all Blue Jays here at Homewood. It's been a shooting gallery against poor Edmund Cathers. Blue Jays have already cranked up over 20 shots. In Albany, it all started in the first quarter with their inability to clear. They couldn't get into an offensive flow. We're gonna have a moving pick against Johns Hopkins. So the Danes catch a break, but can they clear and just get settled and just grab some semblance of momentum here in Baltimore? Dave Petromala was wondering out loud, you know, are they gonna hold the ball? Scott Marr said, I'm not one to stall. We're gonna play our offense and attack. And now though, with his team down by six, they need to accelerate, you would imagine. But just at the same time though, with what you're talking about, just get everybody a feel for the ball. Get some touches, get some crisp passes in. This is a game, Albany would love to win this game. Don't, don't get it wrong. But Scott Moore, they've got to turn around on Sunday and travel to Vermont for a key America East Conference game. They're already 0-1 in the conference, losing to the Hartford Hawks. But this is still a big one to have on your resume if you want to get an at-large berth into the big dance. They beat Vermont last year, Albany did 9-4 in a home game. Caulfield gets topside, rings the pipe. He had Bassett beaten and he hit the iron. Pierce Bassett, mild-mannered personality, fits right in. A good balance for this young, excitable Johns Hopkins team. Brannigan losing Raffensperger and whistles it off the helmet of Jack Nicola out of play. You can see the confidence of John Rannigan. 11 goals and nine assists. Coming into this game, he has a marker and an assist tonight. But he is just playing terrific right before our eyes, making that jump from freshman flair to sophomore standout. Goodrich will roll in against Kehoe. Mike Banks comes to help. Palmer extremely shifty in that alley. Rule ready to go. The extra pass, the jump shot from Goodrich fought off. Picked up on the end line by Nicola. Albany catches a break. What looked like a zone was actually mass confusion on the Albany part. Guys running off of guys, picking players up. And now this is a big clearing opportunity for the Great Danes. Mike Banks doing the honors. Gets it into the cross of Caulfield. As he's hatching it there by rule. It's put down on the turf. And the youngster Riley comes up with it. Riley, who was schooled in the first quarter last week by North Carolina's Billy Bitter. Unsettled, Boland over the top, and he missed the target. One of the keys of the game for Albany was offense to defense. They cannot buy a clear this evening to get a fresh possession. They are five out of nine, and you want to clear around 80%. Albany well below that average. Hopkins so far perfect in getting it from the defensive end to the offensive end. Eight of eight out of their clears. Six minutes to go in the opening half. Goodrich floats one for Palmer. 
Inside look. Bolin draws a crowd. Triple team there, and it squirts free to Daly Baker. Baker, who had a couple of goals against Hopkins last year here. Great Danes looking to play clear. Daly Baker, a defensive midfielder. Scott Marr losing one of his best in that department to an injury recently. Kyle Crotty injured his shoulder against Harvard. Bonatonibus has the only goal for Albany. He has the ball right now, 10 in purple. Ressa Terrence, who they will float in out of the substitution box, trying to find a favorable matchup. Right now, Rule has to dig in defensively. Ressa Terrence kicks it for Miles Thompson. Big part of the drama against Harvard last week. Outside shot score, Ressa Terrence with a BB. We talked about the success of Albany hinging on keeping it hot. And I haven't liked how they've been too individualistic in the last couple of sequences. But you see Thompson, that Canadian slash Native American style of backing in on your defender. The defender says, hey, he's not looking. I'm going to slide quickly. Hopkins doesn't backfill. Resiterit steps down. Great vision by Thompson. Resiterit's high to high. Beautiful shot. They've got to move the ball to beat this Hopkins defense. Facing off now, Matt McKenzie to dig in against Delente, giving him a different look. And McKenzie will win this one. Will he be able to come up with a ground ball? He does. Fierstein slips it on out to Caulfield, and it's consecutive possessions for Albany, something they could use a great deal. It's dirty work, but Bontanabis with the clear, and now McKenzie with that gritty ground ball. That's what Albany needs. Little hustle plays, dirty work to get back into this game, and it's so vital to get these guys possession time. The junior, Joe Resseter, it's off a five-point performance against Harvard. Guns one wide of Bassett. It'll stay Albany ball. Four players will not leave the field for Albany tonight, and that's Brian Caulfield, Joe Resseteritz, Miles, and Ty Thompson. Whoever the fourth quote-unquote attackman is will always rotate in and get a run at midfield. They will not leave the field when the ball is on offense for the Great Danes. Dwayne Stewart with it now. Picked up by Castronova. Stewart off the roll dive. Slick pass to Caulfield. One more for Resseteritz. Ron Autonomous shaded there by Donovan. As we leak below four minutes to go in this first half. Stewart kicks. Ron Autonomous off the split dodge. Rolls right back into Tim Donovan, who wouldn't budge. 7-2 for the Blue Jays. They had a 4-1 lead after one. Dwayne Stewart on the hop. Into the alley where he'll meet Tucker Durkin. That's no easy assignment. Miles Thompson. They come to attack him quickly. It's Durkin doing the honors. Miles Thompson shuffles this one to the end line. There's a flag down. And the game's first extra man situation will come here. It's going to be a slash against Johns Hopkins again. Once Thompson turned his head, Durkin came with the quick slide. I think he caught him a little bit on the back. Flag down. And this is an area where Albany has to capitalize. Coming into this game, an anemic two out of 26 on the extra man offense. They begin in that 3-3 look. They actually change it swiftly. They want more movement around the cage, especially from the, the three guys who are closest to the goal. Something to shake out of the doldrums, Mark was assessing man up. There's a great feed and a better save by Bassett as he stonewalls Ressa Terrence. Circle extra man offense with a flash of Ressa Terrence to the vacated crease area, but you see Pierce Bassett, why he is having an all-American caliber season. Those graphics just showing you the troubles Albany has had with respect to its extra man offense, and Bassett just stopped at stone cold. That was good execution all the way to the finishing touch. They found the shot they wanted, the cutter that they wanted. I mean, when you have a, a layup like that, I think Ressa Terrence may have rushed the shot a little bit, dropped the stick as well. Bassett did a nice job of getting down and smothering the low-to-low -low offering. Donovan working in against Matt Novosel. 
Back to six on six. Rannigan sprints in out of the box. Finds the man, Delente. It's shouldered away by Cathers. Cathers got anchored into that crease like a statue and still able to shrug it aside. He's a bulky goaltender. Goes better than 240 pounds. Bulky is an understatement. Reminds me a lot of, of Mike Gable, a, a, a goaltender for Cortland a couple years ago. Won a Division III National Championship. That is a big body, folks. He doesn't have to move much. Therefore, he's very efficient with his movements, and he just saved that ball. Really, it came to him. Caulfield hesitates. 138 away from our Warrior halftime report. This is Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU. 7-2 favor Johns Hopkins, ranked third in the land. A Friday night special in uh, chilly Baltimore. Great Danes wouldn't mind milking the time in this second quarter. In no hurry to go to the goal. Tucker Durkin stares out at Caulfield. Caulfield among the national leaders when it comes to assists, and he has one tonight. Under a minute. Caulfield had four helpers against Harvard. Stall warning or a timeout, as it has been asked for by Scott Marr. We need to step away, Mark, with the Blue Jays in front of the Great Danes by five. Back for the conclusion of this first half in a moment on ESPNU. Scott Marr coaching his Great Danes during this timeout huddle at 7-2 Johns Hopkins. ESPNU's coverage of college softball continues this weekend, Saturday to Eastern. Number 18, Kentucky takes on SEC rival, second-ranked Georgia. Then Sunday at 2 Eastern, it's top-ranked Alabama squaring off with LSU. Alabama this year, 37-2, 12-1 in the SEC. Deserving of its number one ranking. Back to men's lacrosse, 40 seconds left in the opening half. And Albany in possession. Johns Hopkins struck four times in the opening quarter. Three more here in the second. Great Danes with a deliberate approach to this final 90 seconds. We're down to 20 here. Stewart sprints to the cage. Chopped at by Durkin. Help comes from Castronova. They work him over and they put the ball on the ground. Tucker Durkin. Cradling it along the sidelines. Stewart trying to fence him in. Durkin heaves it ahead. Time ticking away. Banks whistles one towards the cage, and this first half is complete. The Johns Hopkins Blue Jays have a 7-2 lead. We are approaching the Warrior halftime report. Coming up between quarters two and three, a Warrior Pro session involving takeaways. We'll preview some of the top games this weekend and also share highlights and analysis from the opening 30 minutes here at Homewood Field. Johns Hopkins at seven and two, tangling with the Albany Great Danes, a mark of four and five and under the direction of Scott Marr. Kind enough to join us at the end of two. And Scott, from your vantage point, Sure looked like Johns Hopkins got off to the flying start. How did your guys respond? I thought we did a good job, to be honest. I mean, they, we, you know, we made a few mistakes early in the game, went off sides a couple times after getting some stops. Uh, but I think we settled in a little bit. We were trying to go early, and then uh, after a couple goals there, we decided we were kind of creating offense for them. So we decided to cut, cut back on that a little bit and just play our regular normal defense. Scott, we appreciate your time. Go get in that dressing room get warm. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. 7-2 Johns Hopkins after 30 minutes of play. Stay right there. The Warrior Halftime Report is next on ESPNU. 30 minutes in the books at Homewood Field. Johns Hopkins in Albany getting reacquainted this chilly night. This is the Warrior Halftime Report. And with tonight's Warrior Pro Session, Quint Kesnick, Jeff Snyder, and Ken Clausen discuss and demonstrate takeaways. This Halftime Report is presented by Warrior, all hail. And now, a Warrior Pro Session with Quint Kesnick. 
what appears to be chaos is actually organized mayhem. A defender trying to take the ball away from the offensive ball carrier. Like a ninja with a lacrosse stick, the takeaway defender carves the ball carrier into oblivion. Eye-catching stick checks start with fundamentally sound footwork and a plan. Can you say back brain slap, kayak, pencil check, rap check, poke check, slap check, over the head, ding dong, and rusty gate? We're joined by Ken Kloss, a professional defender, former defender at the University of Virginia, and Jeff Snyder's gonna be our demo man. Ken, where does a, a, ta a good takeaway check start? Well, you know, first and foremost, as a defender, you have two main objectives. Number one, you want to stop your offense player from getting a good shot off on the net or scoring a goal. Number two, you want to get that ball back and return it to the offensive players. Takeaway artists often talk about setups. How, how do you set up an offensive player? Well, you know, the best opportunity to throw a takeaway check is when your offensive player is not a threat to score a goal, which may be just coming over the midfield line or behind the net at a point where he can't really get a shot off. So I see guys poke or, or slap to get a reaction out of the offensive ball carrier. What, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, really you want to kind of disrupt the rhythm of the offensive player. Every lacrosse player has a rhythm to which they're cradling the ball. You really want to come in, time up that rhythm, and kind of throw off what he's trying to do, his objective. You might have some slaps, you might have some pokes, but ultimately you want to be uh, dictating the situation rather than the offensive player dictating. This is a case where you get inside and you can actually lift and dislodge the ball. Uh, what is a more advanced, like a professional level takeaway? Some more advanced checks might be something called the over the head check. Now there's two different variations. One, I may be resting my stick on his back, giving Jeff the opportunity to bring that stick forward and when he does, I'm going to come over his head this way and knock the ball on the ground. The other version of this check is I'm going to have my stick in front of him, punch this guy and rip this ball down. Now to finish off the play, what you have to do as a defender, perhaps the most important part of the takeaway check is going to be to pick up that ball and return it to the offensive end, much like a fumble in football. And that's what you're good at. A takeaway artist is creative, he's aggressive, and he can also weigh risk and reward. Homewood Field in Baltimore, home base for Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU tonight. We have played two quarters, and Johns Hopkins has a 7-2 advantage over visiting Albany. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you, and Mark, as we get set for these first half highlights, it's Johns Hopkins showing a very diversified offense, beginning first and foremost with a midfielder, John Greeley. Well, it's what makes Hopkins so dangerous, the balance of this Blue Jay team. Number nine, Greeley. Gets the party started off the feed from John Rannigan, but really the story, in addition to the offensive balance of Johns Hopkins, the turnovers by the Albany Great Danes, giving this potent Blue Jay offense the ability to score goals in bunches. John Rannigan in transition. You're not going to stop him when he has a full head of steam, and Kyle Wharton continues his terrific 2011 season with a marker and Lee Coppersmith so fast, they have to find a way to stop the turnovers if you're if you're Albany. The video review favored the Blue Jays, and you'd imagine the numbers would do just the same. It really does. Edmund Cather's facing a lot of shots, and the shots on goal pretty accurate for Johns Hopkins. Matt Delente and his wings doing a great job of controlling the faceoffs. You win the faceoffs, you win the ground ball battle, and again, Albany, about six of those eight turnovers occurred in the first 15 minutes of action. Temperatures dropping here at Homewood Field. The rain, thankfully, has subsided for the boys running around. But uh, those hardy lacrosse lovers in the stands who brave the weather tonight deserve a gigantic thumbs up. They brought their rain slickers and ponchos. They just love the sport. Let's start taking bets. Moms, dads, girlfriends. <laughs> uh, the, the hardy bunch here at Homewood Field as we get a good look at, at Scott Marr. Such an amazing job with the Albany program. But tonight is wet and cold. Hey, a great night to punch up ESPNU and check out some college lacrosse. Albany Great Danes, a fixture in the America East Tournament. Yeah, you need the gloves. You definitely <laughs> need the gloves. Top four teams, if I'm not mistaken, will make the America East Conference Tournament by Let's season's go, end. Fred. Conference tournament, go, or conference play really heating up. You've got Army, Army and Bucknell tomorrow pending a government shutdown. If the government shuts down, that game will be canceled. Off we go in quarter number three, and this has been a frame that has definitely favored Johns Hopkins. The Blue Jays are seven and two this year, and they've done great damage in the third quarter. It's important to come out in the second 30 minutes of lacrosse and get off to a quick start continue momentum or claw back into games where you might be trailing and Johns Hopkins doing a great job thus far this season. Blue Jays bagged a season high 19 goals against Albany last year when the Great Danes visited Homewood. 
Albany in the uh, traveling purple and gold. Edmund Cathers, very stout between the pipes in the opening half. His pass for Reseteritz gets away. Donovan brings it across the short stick D. Midfielder fires and scores. It might be a different half, but it's the same story plaguing Albany. The inability to clear, get it from defense to offense. Just a mishandle by Reza Terrence. Put two hands on the stick. When you pick up the ground ball, Tim Donovan, the senior out of Parkton, Maryland, Loyola High School, makes an intelligent decision. And I think he caught Cathers off guard. Fakes the feed behind. Cathers relaxes for a second. And look at the placement. Beautiful shot by Tim Donovan. Scott Marr subbing in John Carroll off the pine. Tim Donovan gets his first of the year. Donovan had only one goal last year. Guess who it was against? The Albany, Albany. Great it was. <laughs> and John Carroll takes over. Carroll was the starter at the outset of the year. Edmund Cathers played very, very well in the fall, impressed the coaches, earned the starting nod. And John Carroll, the junior, took it very well. He's been very supportive of the freshman. Now he's getting a chance to play with his team trailing by six. Right to the goal quickly, it's bounced wide on the run by Anthony Ostrander. We talked to Scott Marr about the transition from a two-year starter in John Carroll as a junior going to a freshman, how it affects your defense, but we're seeing it all around college across. Steven Restivo has relieved Chris Madelon as a starting goaltender for the North Carolina Tar Heels, is chief among them. So if your goalie's not playing well, you gotta put and it's not that even a goalie's not playing well. you got to put the guy between the pipes. It gives you the best opportunity to win. And, and it, up until this game, it's been Edmund Cathers. And now John Carroll, they're checking into the game. And, but here comes Cathers back in. Maybe just a little talking to on the sideline. Jack Riley stalking Brian Caulfield. And wasn't it interesting to listen to Dave Petromala talk about how Riley answered and accepted the switch of assignments last week against North Carolina after Billy Bitter burned it? And he came into Dave Petromala's office. Three goals in the first quarter for the All-American senior against the talented freshman. He apologized to Dave Petromala. Said, it's my fault. I blew the assignment. Because Dave Petromala apologized to the team at halftime saying, I gave you the wrong matchup. So shows a lot of maturity and accountability. A theme with this Blue Jay team in 2011. And then the coach trotted out a, an example for when he was playing, when he was a freshman in the late 80s. North Carolina's Brett Davies that took him to task. Lightning quick shot from Ressa Terrence, rips the corner. We're seeing some great shooting by the junior out of Hamburg, New York, Joe Ressa Terrence. Missed half of last season with a broken foot. He is such a good dodger, so heady, and look at him just take what is given to him by Phil Castronova. And that is what Dave Petromal is upset about. Casanova did not get a stick in the gloves. You cannot leave Joe Resateritz with his hands free. Joe Resateritz now with points in 29 straight games. Delente will draw for Johns Hopkins. It'll be Matt McKenzie for Albany. And Delente comes up with a scoop. Guida driving back. Ressa Terrence has been automatic in his career with a couple of tallies tonight. Frank Ressa Terrence, you mentioned his older brother, 2007 game winner, the only win in the history for Albany in this series. And that just so happened to be the year where Albany lacrosse had their most successful season going to the 2007 quarterfinals, losing to Cornell in overtime. The eventual champions that spring, the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Palmer draws the quick double. Rannigan just misfires, then gets tangled up with Mike Finnegan. The Great Danes will throw a lot of different long sticks at the Hopkins midfielders tonight. A lot of different personnel playing for Coach Scott Marr. He goes about, what, 28, 30 deep, runs a lot of bodies, and that's what you have to do when you play this up-tempo Great Dane style. Remind me to thank him about that. He's <laughs> really made me do my homework. Closing in, Guida. Cranks that one way wide as he was shooting through Finnegan. A little uncharacteristic, Albany now is in a zone defense. I think they've recognized the quick slides were getting beaten by the Hopkins midfielders in the first half. They've made an adjustment and they're packing in a little bit more here in the second half. 
Rannigan wants to run downhill. He gets up a head of steam. Gets the double in the alley, then finds Wharton. One more for Boland, it's deflected away and ripped off. Good defensive work as Cathers is back in there. Throws a bullet on the outlet right on the button to McKenzie. Unsettling right to the cage and just grazing the outside of the pipe. Looks like the zone paid off for Albany as Hopkins thought they could carve it up, but Travis Lyons picks it off in traffic. And there we see that great outlet by Edmund Cathers taken out, little talking to by Scott Marr, settle down, get back in the contest and make some plays. Bonatonibus on the ball there, 10 in the purple and gold, a couple of assists against Harvard last week as Albany took down the Crimson Tide. Caulfield and Riley, renew acquaintances back behind the net. Caulfield slings it too tall for Bonatonibus. On the move, it's Castronova, three on three. Runs by his defender, Ressa Terrence. Didn't get it to the net. Bonatonibus takes it back for Albany as we near the four minute mark of the third quarter. Phil Castronova has been a terrific addition to the short stick defensive midfield core for Johns Hopkins, but he's a freshman. He has some mental lapses and that time, a mental lapse probably should have pulled it out gotten the proper personnel in the field. Castronova was waiting to substitute onto the defensive end, just happened to corral that loose ball. Ryan Caulfield will back it out. Riley in position for the Blue Jays. Goal line extended, here comes the double team. Ressa Terrence changes the point of attack. Bonatonibus back for Ressa Terrence. Kreitzer to the alley. Caulfield's in no hurry. Five minute mark soon approaching in this third quarter. 8-3 for the Blue Jays. Ty Thompson gets a touch here and Bassett makes the save on him. Ty Thompson had four goals in the first half last week. He was very quiet in this one tonight. Bassett makes his fourth stop. Dave Petromala said this week what was keeping him up at night when thinking about Albany were the Thompsons. And we've only mentioned their name maybe two, three times tonight, all of which ended with the save on the Thompson shot. No impact so far on this game. Coach had a great quote about how impossible it was for his team to simulate the Thompsons because he needed almost to clone Zach Palmer five times to get the equivalent. Crafty, behind the back, through the legs, in tight. Great stick work and ball handling, but Hopkins has done a great job of pushing them out of their comfort zone. Copper Smith sends it on back. This is Burkhart. Marshall Burkhart, the Ohio native. Away from Raffensperger, the long stick midfielder for the Great Danes. Great look inside. Goodrich did not convert that one. A race to the sideline. Officials tonight, Forrester, Manfuso, and Runk will say Johns Hopkins ball. This weekend, ESPNU brings you two exciting college baseball matchups. Saturday at 8 Eastern, it's LSU and Arkansas in an SEC showdown. Sunday at 5, it's the in-state battle, UC Irvine against Cal State Fullerton. Blue Jays and Great Danes have traded goals in this third quarter, one apiece. Copper Smith was straightened up there by the short stick D midfielder Mike Kehoe. And one of the defensive adjustments we're seeing with Albany, they're not challenging the Hopkins midfielders outside of 20 yards anymore. Fans were digesting the stats there a few moments ago. Raffensperger running for a four on three fast break, fires and scores! Scott Raffensperger. Great job by the Albany defense. They're packing it in, not getting run by. Second interception of the quarter, and look at the cool customer in Raffensperger. He's a senior out of Altamont, New York. Cruises in, sizes up his opportunity. That is beautiful placement, off stick, hip. And he finds the back of the net. That is a, a play that can really ignite this Albany team. Big face off for the Danes. And Delente wins it in a heartbeat. He goes right to the cooker. Boland makes one more for Wharton. That's deflected away. Out of bounds. It'll be Johns Hopkins ball. Wharton wants the whistle and the quick restart. Snaps the pass to Palmer. And it's Cathers with the stuff. Blue Jays love to work it quickly off the end line. 
We're seeing emotion right now from the Albany Great Danes. The sidelines into it. All of them cheered, pumped their fists into the air with that Cather save. We're seeing ever so slightly the momentum tilting the Great Danes way. McKenzie with much better balance in terms of the shot story in this second half. Johns Hopkins was a shooting machine in the first 30 minutes. Blue Jays on top by four. Albany will not go away quietly. This is a Great Dane team that scraps. When you look at their schedule and the wins, Ohio State, Delaware, Harvard, UMass, but then they lose to a team like, and nothing to take away from Marist, but that's a major upset. A winless team comes into Albany and steals a win. Inside look, Miles Thompson did not deliver there. Thompson still on the ball. Off the scoop, it's Riley. One more for Leitner. This youngster can run in transition. Yields it to Rannigan. John Rannigan moseys in, loves his left, makes one more pass for Boland. It'll get away. It's a turnover back to the Albany Great Danes. When you're up eight to four, you can take some chances. Hopkins trying in transition to get some things done, but really, Impressed with the clearing game in 2011 for Hopkins, something that's been an Achilles heel over the last two or three seasons. Mark, you mentioned Albany beat UMass in March. The Minutemen were ranked number five in the land at that time. It was the highest ranked team Albany's ever defeated. Johns Hopkins is ranked third in this matchup this Friday night, and Albany now clawing its way back within striking distance. We talk about the America East, Albany's conference. Everybody thought Stony Brook was gonna run away with it, but watch out for the Hartford Hawks. Some Canadian talent, Cudmore, Scott Vement between the pipes. Hartford and Stony Brook face off tomorrow. Ressa Terrence fires, that's eaten up by Bassett. Bassett, who is very strong against North Carolina, even with missing a few days of practice, he was bothered by the flu. So many of the Blue Jays were ailing in that win over the Tar Heels. Save total favoring Albany with Edmund Cathers. Palmer and Wharton back behind the goal. Zach Palmer in no hurry to go after Travis Lyons. Novacell looks after Wharton. Rannigan wants the isolation. Tiptoes in there, finds some room. Greeley fires, he missed it, too high. Albany's now playing a zone. They're playing spots and areas. They're not switching, they're not sliding. They're just passing the Dodger off to the next man. So if you're the Blue Jays, especially the midfielders up top, what's your read? That was a good read actually by Rannigan. He recognized slide wasn't coming, but the man was ball watching, got it off quickly to his linemate. Guida, the freshman, getting a marvelous first year experience to run with the top midfield and fitting in very nicely. Bolin, his pass will get away from Palmer. Albany gets possession. A little bit less than five minutes to go in the third. ESPNU's coverage of college softball continues this weekend. Saturday, 2 Eastern, Kentucky tangling with SEC rival Georgia, ranked second in the country. Sunday, 2 Eastern, it's top-ranked Alabama squaring off with LSU. The Alabama game in Baton Rouge, Beth Mowens and Jessica Mendoza have the call on that one. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you tonight here in Baltimore, where the Blue Jays are leading the Great Danes by four. What do you think the weather's like in, uh, in Alabama, Joe? Significantly better than where you and I are standing presently, as I can see the breath coming from your mouth, by the way. Temperatures uh, <clears throat> in the mid to low 30s, meteorologist Mark Dixon says. <laughs> Caulfield backing in against Riley. Yeah, something tells me it's not bitterly cold in Baton Rouge right now. There would be some bees in the bats, although I think they use aluminum, right? Absolutely. Stewart fires here, way wide. You can see Albany playing with more confidence. For their sake, you hope it's not too little too late. But again, big out of conference game. But these Danes have to turn right around and face the Vermont Catamounts in ultimately what is their end game. Get a top four seed to make it to the American East Tournament. Miles Thompson was looking for Cousin Ty there. I believe that was a pass, and that's why it'll be turned back over 
to Johns Hopkins. Albany trying to sell that it was deflected out of bounds by Hopkins, but referee Kevin Forrester doesn't buy that argument. Possession over to the Blue Jays. That was a good pickup because that was intended to be Thompson to Thompson. Good hustle on the sideline. Wharton kept it alive, and then he was fouled. There have not been very many extra man opportunities tonight. It's been a clean game. I think what we're going to get here is a push with possession against the Albany Great Danes. So Johns Hopkins will enjoy an extra man opportunity for up to 30 seconds. Blue Jays on the year, just 27% in their own right. We underline the struggles for Albany on the extra man in the opening half. Bolin, normally an attackman, moves straight away up top in this unit, and they bring in the Canadian freshman, number 92 in the white, that's Brandon Ben. Goodrich, peeking over top of the defenders. Skip it to Bolin, fires and scores! Terrific ball movement by the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Albany in somewhat of a cluster defense. Everybody packing it in around the goal area. They know that Palmer likes to find Ben when he's on the extra man set, but they don't slide to Chris Bolin. Time and room, high to high. Beautiful placement and a great shot by the fifth year senior. Chris Bolin now bringing some life to the Shivering fans in the stands. Bolin gets his fourth extra man goal of the year. That's tops on this Blue Jays squad. Good wing play there from Raffensperger. Looking for it in a battle with Castronova. And Delente comes to help his own cause. Another great example of wing play. Castronova didn't cleanly pick up the ground ball, but was there helping Delente out. Gooses it to an area where Delente can pick it up and get that 68% success rate even higher at the faceoff. Mark, it's getting late in the third quarter, 245 in this frame. Johns Hopkins holding off Albany 9-4. Two teams have traded two markers apiece in this third quarter. Goodrich, who had a couple points in the opening half. Copper Smith was on the score sheet just the same. 16 in the white straight away right now. Burkhart. Palmer operates back behind the net this year. Full time as an attackman. He saw a lot of time at midfield a season ago. Palmer's a guy who's not going to beat you a lot off the dodge, but he's crafty inside, tremendous hands, great stick work, and a terrific complement to an outside bomber like Kyle Wharton. Here comes Wharton. A shovel shot right to the waiting cross of Edmund Cathers. Cather's save total is up to nine. He has been very instrumental in games in which Albany has won. Save totals in the high teens and low 20s. Caulfield just chilling back behind the net. 90 seconds left in quarter three. Albany needs to push the pace a little bit. Ressa Terrence off ball has been terrific all night. Albany really hasn't beaten Johns Hopkins off the dribble at all this evening. But they've got to do quick ball movement, create those slide opportunities, and find the open man. Over the top for Ressa Terrence. Let's it go and scores! Joe Ressa Terrence has a hat trick. Third goal of the evening, and all off ball. Great ball movement by the Albany Great Danes. Bontanabis. Just a skip pass up top. Number five is not accounted for. He's terrific off ball. You can see the attackman in him finding the open space. And when he gets the ball in his stick, he's a very efficient shooter. Albany's leading goal scorer, their leading point producer, and their top threat tonight has been Joe Reseteris. Possession awarded to Johns Hopkins with just over a minute. In quarter three, it's 9-5 for the Blue Jays. Novacell cheats out on Wharton. Dave Petromala and his bench continue their substitution pattern. Rannigan and Greeley together again with Guida. Greeley from the wing. 
Rolling back. Brannigan on a shuffle step, zips it wide. Quick passing inside for Guida, and he was attacked. Surrounded there by purple and gold. It's exactly what Albany wants Hopkins to do. Put it inside. They've got the confidence in Cathers to make the outside save. They've been playing zone almost exclusively here in the third quarter. On the clear, Finnegan does the honors. Ten seconds left in the third right now. Guida racing down the long stick defender. Miles Thompson given up by Durkin. Centering pass, Leitner makes the intercept as a flag settles down. It's going to be a push call. Flag down denotes possession. It's going to be a push on Tucker Durkin just trying to make a play and make something happen. He shoves Thompson in the back. 32nd man advantage coming up for the Albany Great Danes. Numbers shove in the back equals an extra man opportunity. Albany will probably hold this ball. No face off to begin the fourth quarter and they'll enjoy possession. Caulfield. Floats one in. It'll start at the wing. Miles Thompson dips a toe into the screening box, and it will be all the possession to start the fourth quarter. After three, Johns Hopkins has the advantage. They were given Albany their best push, but no closer to the edge just yet here at Homewood. Old Glory waving above Homewood Field here in Baltimore. Johns Hopkins has a 9-5 advantage after three quarters of play. Tracking things tonight, it was a good first quarter for the Blue Jays. It really was. They jumped on Albany, took advantage of turnovers. Albany couldn't clear the ball in that first quarter. Fra Joe Reseter, it's having a nice evening uh, for the Albany Great Danes. And when you look at the Albany attack, they account for over 60% of the Great Danes offense. But two guys we haven't mentioned a whole lot tonight, the Thompson cousins, Ty Thompson, Miles Thompson, both of them double donuts. And Ressa Terrence converted to the midfield this week. Brian Caulfield put back into attack in that last outing, settling in with his playmaking skills. 28 in the purple and gold is straight away here. Extra man for Albany trying to claw its way within three. Quick shot, score! Miles Thompson, Mark Dixon, right on cue. He didn't like the fact that he was over all night long. And Thompson showing that quick release, beautiful placement, nothing fancy about this offensive set. Albany doesn't have offensive sets in their extra man. They just move the ball, they keep it hot. Thompson that time stings the upper 90 and just hot ball movement and quick rotation by the Great Dane extra man unit. So tough on goalies. Miles Thompson, his release point you can never really target it. He'll bring it at you from multiple different spots and to different targets. He makes goaltenders' lives miserable. Face-off win for the Blue Jays. Castronova turning back. Kyle Wharton far from the cage. Along with Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew assembled for you tonight. It's Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU. Third-ranked Blue Jays entertaining the Albany Great Danes, a team they have beaten eight out of nine tries between these two schools. Rannigan switching it up for Guida. Rannigan, the main midfield threat for these Johns Hopkins Blue Jays, an emerging star. Greeley's pass intercepted. Redwell picked off by Raffensperger. The Great Danes have turned what was once a lopsided game. At one point, it was 7-1 for Johns Hopkins into a 9-6 ball game at the moment. They scramble for possession. Riley came up with it. It was popped out of his stick. Miles Thompson comes away. He was flattened, and down comes a flag. Blue Jays are going sh shorthanded. Business has definitely picked up over the last couple of minutes. Love the defensive play by Albany. They seemingly have the Hopkins offense confused. It's gotten them back into the game. But then off of the failed clear, just the hustle by Miles Thompson. Beautiful ground ball. Picks it up. 
wheeling and dealing inside. And we're going to see Thompson. I think it's right there. Tucker Durkin catches him in the head and draws the flag. Miles Thompson over along the sideline for a word of instruction. The officials talking it over. Tucker Durkin stepped foot into the penalty box, then he jumped back out, awaiting to hear the call. Jack Riley laid a big check on the gloved hand of Thompson. They may call that as a slash. So an unnecessary roughness call against Albany was the first call. Mike Woods, the midfielder, but then Tucker Durkin with the slash. Simultaneous fouls, they go to alternate possession, which is determined at the opening coin flip of the game. The winning team has the opportunity to choose what goal they want to defend or alternate possession. Hopkins has the AP, the alternate possession, therefore they get awarded the ball with the offsetting penalties. Appreciate the clarification, Mark. As Rannigan moseys into this next offensive set for the Blue Jays, Tucker Durkin's been flagged three times tonight. Rannigan will switch it up for Greeley. Leaning in against the short stick defender there, Baker. Greeley no shooting angle. Bolin who has a pair of markers tonight. Albany has fought its way back to within three. Greeley, cross crease, on his way down. No flag, Bolin was looking for one. Finnegan comes out of there with it, then finds Mike Banks. Banks, the senior, four years in the starting rotation and a very interesting story. Mike Banks, the game of lacrosse may have saved his life. When he was a youngster, he was incarcerated. Bonatonibus flashes in here four on three. Caught by the trail check of Castronova. Mike Banks, though, part of a gang growing up in Connecticut. His street name was Bookham. Behind bars for drug dealing and burglary. He's turned his life around and has become a, an outstanding defender for Albany. He was great his freshman year. A couple of trying seasons his sophomore and junior year, but back on the beam now. But he got a lot of hype because of his background story, his athletic ability, but not only is he a great lacrosse player, but he's also turned into a leader for Scott Maher. And anytime you take a young man with that background and you're able not only to get him going in the right direction on the lacrosse field, but also off the field, you're doing a great job and, and, and a testament to Mike Banks and the, and the, and the tutelage of Albany coach Scott Maher. Rannigan and Guida working on the outside. Blue Jays have won four of their last five. They've been sharp at Homewood. Rannigan kicks this one to Palmer. One more for Bolin, and he bounced it wide of Cathers. That play was set up splendidly. Great ball movement, terrific teamwork. You mentioned Hopkins effective at home here at Homewood Field. Albany is 0-3 on the road, Joe. Their last three games of this regular season will all be on the road as well. Blue Jays just outstanding when they control a game after three quarters under Dave Petromala. This team hardly loses in April with Coach Petromala at the wheel. Excellent takeaway check there by Novacell. They battle for it down on the turf. Daly Baker didn't come up. Bolin does. And Johns Hopkins gets the timeout. 10.42 left in regulation time. For the Blue Jays, a three goal advantage against the former Blue Jay attackman, Scott Maher and Albany. Dave Petromala has his guys in the classroom there on the sideline. It's 9-6 Johns Hopkins, 10.43 to go in the fourth. John Rannigan has been a main man for the Blue Jays this year and tonight again. The evolution of elite midfielders. You show some promise as a freshman, but you make that jump into a sophomore stud. And when you talk about Johns Hopkins, Kyle Harrison is a freshman, 
not only with 13 points, but won about 64% of his face-offs, made the jump into a sophomore. Paul Rabel had the luxury of playing with Kyle Harrison as a freshman and got the pole as a sophomore, but look at those numbers. And there you see John Rannigan, 14 points a year ago, already 21 in 2011. Is he the next McLaughlin Award winner? Kyle Harrison won it twice. Paul Rabel once is the best midfielder in the nation. John Rannigan certainly seems to be on that pace. Head coach Dave Petromala says he hesitates when making comparisons, especially to Rabel and Harrison, out of a deference, I think, in importance to them and what they were, how they meant, to, what they meant to this Blue Jays program. Rannigan's on the way. He certainly is, and you also don't want to put that type of pressure on a young man. I mean, just ask John Greeley, number one recruit from Inside Lacrosse magazine coming out of high school and he's had a pretty darn good career so far with the Blue Jays but he's not recognized because he's not putting up 20 and 30 points in a season. Woods finds Kehoe, short stick defensive midfielders helping out there, collaborating on the clear for Albany and now the Great Danes have a chance to make this a two goal game with 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Miles Thompson skips in the America East Rookie of the Week for his performance last week against Harvard. Then Ty Thompson's bid is partially blocked. What do you know, the rain is back. <laughs> and how about Jack Riley covering Brian Caulfield? You wanna talk about trust and confidence. Riley taking the big six foot four attackman. He's their primary offensive threat behind the cage distributing. Typically you might see Tucker Durkin with that matchup. Kreitzer to Caulfield. Riley forcing him back. Riley in his own right, a physical specimen defensively for the Blue Jays. Keeping Caulfield at sticks length. That pass is pickpocketed. Copper Smith right in the passing lane. Back come the Blue Jays in white. A game that's been filled with turnovers. Both teams hovering around 15. Sloppy game, and you just took the words right out of my mouth. This fourth quarter especially, very ding-dong, and that Hopkins just can't put Albany away. From this point of view, behind the goal, you get a sense for how Albany will shape up defensively. Blue Jays complete their substitutions. Wharton waiting for Guida. Works very well in tight spaces. Quick first step. Rannigan to Greeley. That bouncer was blocked. Good close out there on the outside by Finnegan. Albany has had success sloughing in, backing off of Hopkins, but as this clock continues to wind down, Will they be forced to press the action a little bit further? Eight and a half to go in the fourth. Guida delivers for Wharton. Never bashful, he whipped that one high. Wharton's second goal of the evening was a thing of beauty from nearly that same spot. And what he's doing in 2011 that he wasn't doing last year, he's moving his feet, beating people off of the dodge, creating his own shot. That's that phone booth comment. They don't want him to play in the phone booth. Be more mobile. Give your defender a different challenge. Skip it. Greeley off the face dodge. Fires one wide. Good backup by Bolin. Keeps possession for the Blue Jays. Greeley loads it up once more. Guida finds Rannigan for a sizzler. That's stabbed by Cathers. Puts the outlet right on target. Uh-oh, Raffensperger is hurt. Raffensperger stays down in need of repair. Wharton fires, Cathers does it again. And the whistle comes. And you feel for Scott Raffensperger who knew it immediately. Edmund Cathers in goal for Albany continues to be tough. Watch him stand his ground. That is just a beautiful save. Followed the ball all the way into his stick. There we see Raffensperger just trying to clear. And he goes down with the injury. Play is allowed to continue. The referees acknowledge the, the injury. Play was allowed to continue, however, because Hopkins did have, did have advantage. Once Cathers made the save, though, whistle blew, and it'll be Albany possession. As soon as he planted, he knew it. Scott Raffensperger, 22-year-old senior, son of Greg and Kelly, works on the campus radio station back at Albany, being helped to his feet here at Homewood Field. 
Blue Jays have a 9-6 advantage tonight with Old Spice College Lacrosse. Let's have a look at what's to come all along the ESPN networks. Great ACC matchup tomorrow, North Carolina, Virginia. The Cavaliers looking to avoid a three-game losing streak. Syracuse at Princeton. The Tigers trying to turn their season around. Georgetown, Notre Dame. Trap game, I think, for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They try to remain unbeaten. And then a week from tomorrow, Virginia Duke, if one team has had the... The, uh, the Virginia Cavaliers numbers over the years, it has been the Duke Blue Devils. Continue your thought on Notre Dame. That's a stifling defensive unit, isn't it? Incredibly team-oriented. You talk about Kevin Ridgway, Sam Barnes in front of sophomore netminder John Kemp, defensive coordinator Jerry Byrne, head coach Kevin Corrigan, preach system and unselfishness. And no one illustrates that more than the Fighting Irish. Year after year lately, they've been frustrating teams and some of the best offensive teams in the country at that. Albany is still within three. Halfway home in the fourth quarter. Great Dane doing the job defensively along with Cathers in goal. Johns Hopkins hit a dry spell here, nearing 11 minutes without a marker. Bonatonibus on the wing for Miles Thompson, who has definitely got himself into the act in this uh, fourth quarter. Bassett will take it. Castronova, then Donovan with all sorts of real estate in front of him. Donovan's pass, good catch by Boland, and the Blue Jays will settle in six on six. When we look at the injury to Raffenberger. They've already lost Kyle Crotty, a short stick defensive midfield specialist. So Albany hampered by injuries on the offensive end of the field earlier in this season. Now it looks like they're contending with some injuries on the defensive end. How will this team respond again? Their last five games of the regular season, all America East Conference contests. Let's see if Mike Woods gets a long stick with Raffensperger out. They had converted Woods from a long stick defender, a pole, if you will, to a short stick D mid. Rannigan kicks it. Bolin then finds Palmer to the inside. Cathers makes another save on Brandon Ben. Edmund Cathers. Bracing himself there for the hit from Boland as the Great Danes clear. We've been stuck on 9-6 for a while. Here's Daly Baker going to the goal. Then thought better of it. McKenzie with Miles Thompson and then Caulfield. Riley peeks out. Caulfield roll dodge inside, just bouncing it wide of Bassett. The ball will belong to Albany with 5.44 to go. Beautiful inside roll by Caulfield. Look at the way he protected his stick. Six foot four, did a great job of hiding it. Just off the mark by inches. Head coach Scott Marr says of his great Danes, it's great for them to see this tradition. That's why he always makes sure if he can to schedule Johns Hopkins in Syracuse. So right now, his team's having a great time at Homewood Field. They beat the Blue Jays here in 07, the only time they've beaten them in nine tries. Rannigan pulling his way ahead for Ben off of his cross, backed up by Castronova. He scores! This is a big reason why Phil Castronova has made such a difference for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Look at John Rannigan on the clear. Freight train alert. Rannigan runs over the Albany Great Dane, but look at the hustle by Castronova. That's like a center getting down in basketball to clean up a rebound and score you some points. Hustle play, he'll frustrate you with some of the mental mistake we've seen him make tonight, but then he'll dazzle you with hustle plays and production like we just saw. Second goal on the year for Castronova. Delente wins the draw. The other one for the short stick D mid. Came in that big statement game against Virginia here. The Blue Jays had gone cold for better than 12 and a half minutes. Get themselves on the board into double figures and a more workable four goal advantage. Durkin running for cover. Kehoe out there to defend. Somebody has to help Durkin, it's Palmer sprinting there against Travis Lyons. Albany Great Danes need a stop. 
Somebody's got to create a turnover or a takeaway now. And, and you really can't sit back anymore if you're Albany. You're down by four with four and a half left to go in the game. Hopkins, they'll play under a stall warning. They've got no problem with that. They're just going to hold the ball and just try to escape with this win and move on to the next opponent. Have a peek at the stats at the bottom of the screen. The biggest and most important one, 10-6 now for the Blue Jays. Still in possession with Coppersmith. Palmer sightseeing back behind Edmund Cathers, who's been very good, especially in the second half of this game in goal for Albany. Showing his ability, really settled down, taken out of the game by Scott Marr. Only spent about 60 seconds on the sideline, but you can see why Scott Marr is so high on him. Scott may be taking him out again. Remember, he likes to put Carroll in there when they need to double the ball late in the contest. Not just yet. Burkhart to the alley, fires one off the post. The ricochet to the sideline, Coppersmith is there. Scott Marr, no stranger to athletic netminders. Brett Queener led the Great Danes to the 2011 NCAA quarterfinals. So Scott Marr really likes that option of getting an athletic netminder out of the goal to create havoc, especially when they're trailing in close games. Queener, a goalie who scored against Johns Hopkins, if I'm not mistaken. End to end, took it coast to coast. And Queener also used to play extra man offense for Scott Moore. Looking at the two netminders tonight, Cather's nearly a dozen stops. Pressure coming on the perimeter now from the Great Danes. Rannigan to his right, he scores! John Rannigan with some insurance. John Carroll is in the net right now for the Albany Great Danes. They sense the urgency. But this is why Albany has packed it in the second half because Hopkins has shown the ability to run by the midfield defense of Albany. Look at the power and the strength. No slide comes on John Rannigan. And the big sophomore out of Yorktown puts away his second goal of the evening. Rannigan, 3-1 and one against North Carolina last week. Couple goals tonight. That tally is up to 13 now on the year. For the outstanding sophomore, the 19-year-old John Rannigan. The win of the draw at the X. That's uh, Ben Smith, the grad student, the transfer from Harvard who helped out. Johns Hopkins now with a five goal advantage and the ball. Right at their seasonal average, which puts them among the top 12 in the nation. Eleven six now for the Blue Jays. Less than three to go in the fourth. Mark mentioning John Carroll in the nets. The more mobile of the two netminders, so when the double teams need be and the goalies need to get out and cover, Carroll more apt to do it. Rannigan finds Guida. Guida has some shooting room, but didn't pull the trigger. Good patience. You mentioned the goalie dynamic between John Carroll and Edmund Cathers. Carroll, no stranger to that situation. As a freshman, he unseated Dan McEwen as the Albany Great Dane starter. McEwen was a senior that year, so he's seen it from both ends of the spectrum. Carroll split time when he was in high school, Smithtown East. He's used to it, swallowed some of his own pride. You can see the potential Cathers has. Off the split, Guida on the invert. Greeley, Rannigan took his eyes off of it. Didn't make the catch. Here come the Great Danes, it's Matt Johnson on the run. Sprinting back to get in the hole, it's Greeley. Johnson makes that pass. Ty Thompson attacked there by Durkin. Penalty call coming up. Blue Jays soon to be a man down. 143 left in the fourth. Miles Thompson for Joe Resetera who has a hat trick today. Jump shot over top of the cage. Extra man time for Albany. We'll check out the call. That could have been a double dip had Resetera it's been able to cash in. It could have been a goal scored, then an extra man face off opportunity. We'll get the call momentarily. But a big opportunity. It's an illegal body check on Johns Hopkins, hit to the head. So a one minute non-releasable foul. We're seeing it again tonight, Joe. The emphasis on targeting the head and neck area for calls such as that. Albany has had its issues on the extra man. They have to strike quickly now under Scott Marr's direction. We need to take a timeout. We'll get you back for this one's conclusion in a few moments. Hopkins on top by five at Homewood. Those fellas could be in limbo for a little while. Johns Hopkins here in Baltimore, 11-6.
over Albany. Scott Moore would love to see Joe Reseteritz continue his hot hand. A big reason why Albany was able to get back into this game. A huge opportunity now on the extra man offense. They must tally and tally quickly. Reseteritz's bid was blocked. Durkin comes out of there with a ground ball. Johns Hopkins ranked number three in the nation. Poised to improve to eight and two. Should this score remain the same, Albany would fall to four and six. They've got Vermont in two days' time. Ben Smith running away from the pressure. Delente had another outstanding face-off night. One of the leaders, one of the guys who makes sure he takes the pulse of this team, works very well in concert with the coaching staff. Blue Jays take the timeout, leading by five with under a minute to go. Albany in a heap of trouble in Baltimore. Johns Hopkins closing in on another W. Johns Hopkins finishing up matters with Albany. They lead, they lead 11-6 in the fourth. Next up for them, the short trip to College Park. It's the major in-state showdown with Maryland next Saturday. Terps won 10-9 last year at M&T Bank Stadium. The Maryland Terrapins right now playing Navy as we speak, but the Terps look to be in a lot of trouble up until a huge win a week ago against the University of Virginia. Talk about their attack, Ryan Young, Grant Catalino, Tucker Durkin, Jack Riley, Pierce Bassett. They will have their hands full, and we'll have it for you on ESPNU next weekend. Albany will get a look at Harvard on Sunday. They beat the uh, Catamounts 9-4 last year in the uh, Capital District region of New York. Doubling the ball right here with Guida, staring at two long stick defenders. It's Fuchsia and Banks, and he splits them. Guida with the exceptionally quick feet. Not able to split the double team twice there. There's a penalty call coming. Guida playing keep away to near perfection. With the ball down on the turf, we hear the whistle. Guida showing a lot of heart and toughness. He wasn't able to beat the split, but he wins the battle as he takes a check upside the head. So Hopkins will have a man advantage for up to one minute, only 24 seconds left in this ball game. They'll just move the ball around and get out of here and enjoy the W. All elementary now, Mark, but credit to Albany. They battled. They were not going to be blown out in this one. They kept, uh, they kept their wits about them when they were trailing 7-1. Scott Marr had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the team after the Marist loss. They responded with the upset victory over Harvard. This is a team that will scrap and claw outside of the Raffensperger injury. This team is healthy on the offensive end. Blue Jays ready for time to tick away. Down to four seconds left. Johns Hopkins beats Albany by the final count of 11-6. Dave Petromala gets the edge over his old college chum, Scott Marr. Hard fought game between two teams, but it was a tale of an early lead for Johns Hopkins. They took advantage of turnovers by Albany, shot the ball well, and really put Albany down and didn't give him a chance to hang around with a lot of confidence. Blue Jays team improves to eight and two, Mark. Have a glance at what's ahead for them. Huge game against Maryland. Then they play a Naval Academy team that beat the Blue Jays last season for the first time in about 35 years. Loyola and then Army, the Army Black Knights. A great game to end the season for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Maryland Johns Hopkins in the week ahead. Maryland with a big physical attack. That presents a different challenge than what they saw tonight from Albany. Not only that, but the Maryland midfielders, you talk about John Haas and Joe Cummings, they're starting to draw defensive slides and get to the goal. It'll be a battle, not only for the close defense, but the defensive midfield unit for Johns Hopkins as well. Two proud head coaches there, Dave Petromala and Scott Maher, and I'm sure Scott is giving his guys the thumbs up. There are no moral victories. Obviously, they were looking to win here, but they accounted and acquitted themselves well. They didn't fold. They had a rough first quarter. Nothing went right for the Albany Great Danes. There's a lot of positives to take for Scott Marr and his ball club. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's the 23rd Annual State Farm College Slam Dunk and Three Point Championships. Proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Mark Dixon, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanks for your time. Hopkins keeps on rolling at Homewood, 11-6.